Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jay, uh, Jay Silan sir and Vijay Kumar sir for giving me an opportunity to speak on gene composite materials. First, let me thank the management and uh, the organizing team for uh, choosing me as a sp uh, today's speaker on green composite material for one day MDB on waste management technology. Uh, see, everyone uh, these days are uh, uh, going with uh, green, 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 even building green uh, in uh, uh, vehicle green and uh, composite green, like that materials green. What do you mean by green? If the energy consumption is very, very less when compared with the earlier material or the conventional material, then it is called green. And second thing is, if disposal disposable is very easy when compared with uh, the conventional material, then it is called green. So if the materials are easily disposed and uh, that is called biodegradable, uh, then uh, it's called uh, green composite materials. So in our case, uh, there are the, in two aspects, we can say it is a green composite material. One, uh, during the fabrication process, it takes only less uh, energy consumption to produce the uh, same uh, weight or uh, weight of material and when compared with the conventional material. In that case, it is uh, green. The second case is uh, when you dispose to the atmosphere, it won't create, if it won't create any problem, that means if it is completely biodegradable, then the second green comes in the picture. So our composite material comes in two ways as green. That is called it is a green composite material. So if it is a completely, uh, if there are two uh, composite combination of two or more materials. One should be a matrix material. The second should be a uh, reinforcement. The reinforcement gives strength to, uh, to the structure or the system. And uh, the matrix material, it protects the fiber uh, or reinforcement in, in its space and it transfers a load to the um, load to the fiber and it also uh, protects it from environmental uh, conditions like uh, decay or uh, degradation those things so these are the role of fiber and matrix or uh, matrix in the composite materials so when you say hybrid composite means when two or more uh, fibers are different fibers are involved that is called hybrid composite similarly when two or more matrix uh, comes into picture that is also hybrid composite so our composite is uh, being a uh, green composite uh, green composite uh, there are uh, reinforcement can be get it in different ways uh, there are based on the reinforcement the composite is being classified into so metal matrix composite polymer matrix composite ceramic matrix composites so ours it comes under polymer matrix composite but the, it is a natural fiber based composite earlier composites are being classified only three category but now people are uh, talking about nfc natural fiber composite material earlier they they had only one uh, three divisions only classification now we have to take the fourth classification also in our picture so recently it's lost uh, uh, one and a half decades the uh, natural fiber comes into uh, picture it replaced a lot of conventional products in automobile as well as in building industries. Uh, we'll see one by one. So next slide, please, sir. Next slide. Yeah, uh, this is why green composite I told. The next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, challenges of natural fiber composite. Uh, sir, the previous one. The challenges in that. Advantages, sir. Uh, so, advantage of natural fiber composite is the the previous slide, previous one. Uh, before that, uh, there is one slide, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. It is a uh, next. Um, uh, uh, just next slide. Uh, due to my network problem, uh, I could not uh, continuously stream it off. That is why I, I give an opportunity to change the slide to the organizer because I have low network connection and uh, there is a problem with me. Sir, the third slide. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. 
it is a natural fibers are renewable they are biodegradable it is a sustainable and uh, uh, it is uh, you can continuously uh, i mean in every part you can grow it off there is no limiting for this things and the challenges in natural fibers are it is very difficult to get consistency or quality uh, quality it is uh, it is having low impaction when compared with the conventional fibers and stocking for a long time it is very very difficult but synthetic fiber you can stock it for even years together and possibilities of degradation that is uh, you can't store it for a long, long time so either fungi will attack or mild flu will attack so this will uh, deteriorate the compost i mean reinforcement material and sometimes a full order will develop uh, in the material you can't use it for a long time and it is a uh, hydrophilic in nature so it will absorb moisture content from the atmosphere so next slide please sir uh, atmosphere so it will degrade in uh, easily and uh, next yeah and uh, issues are uh, issues in the scrap materials are fiber matrix interface and there is a lot of challenges in dispersion and it is very sensitive to humidity and uh, uv resistance also very very low when compared with the plastic material and uh, fiber will degrade during uh, high temperature processing like uh, when you do compression molding process or transfer molding process and the high temperature go on fast uh, production rate normally we will go for high temperatures and fiber orientation and distribution this is very very difficult without any uh, post processing so these things can be overcome by using uh, three methods one is fiber treatment so when you do fiber treatment the decay a fungi attack and uh, the surface will improve and you can store it for long time and when you do compatible excision or surface uh, for the surface treatment the interfacial bonding between the matrix and fiber will be improved so that you will have a better mechanical properties as well as other properties when you do tectile tectile textile technologies over the fiber you will get the fiber orientation in the respective direction so you will have a uniform distribution of fiber and uniform weaving so you have a uniform strength in all the direction so uh, or else you know, what do you call it uh, you can have a tailor made properties in a particular direction that is also possible next slide please next slide yeah. now classification of natural fiber composites uh, so the fibers are being classified based on whether it is a biodegradable or non biodegradable non degradable if it is a biodegradable there are uh, again uh, it is a uh, classified into two categories one is fully degradable and another is par partially degradable in case of fully degradable you have you can go with the two ways one is a natural based uh, one another is oil based one if it is a natural based one you can use polylactic acid or thermoplastic starch or cellulose or polyhydroxy alkanes recent days people are using polylactic acid to have a grey composite material or polyhydroxyalkyl but the cost of pla and uh, thas is very very high when compared with the conventional thermo setting materials or thermo plastic resins so if it is a oil based resin aliphatic polyester or uh, aliphatic aromatic polyester resin or polyvinyl alkyl or polyester amides also you can use it up. so if it is a partially a biodegradable resins if you want to have it then you can use polypropylene as a uh, matrix material or polyesters polyethylene or polyvinyl alcohol as a matrix material uh, to make natural fiber based composite material next one please sir the non biodegradable composites uh, as usual our conventional materials like epoxy polyester and vinyl ester next yeah these are also some of the examples of different uh, natural fibers areca banana bamboo and root can of the middle row it uh, gives only bast fibers uh, that means only the stems can be used and the bo bottom row only the leaves can be used and the top row is a combination of uh, all the uh, all uh, parts can be used as a fiber material next next slide please yeah here at once uh, earlier you have seen the different plants now you can see the different fibers so how these things are being uh, i mean converted into fiber so after cutting the harvesting the plant 
it has to be soaked in the water for a certain time so that the water will penetrate into it then it start to uh, degrade uh, the outer surface of the fiber then you can do either manual process or mechanical uh, riddling uh, de uh, degrading process so that you can remove the unwanted material from the fiber surface and uh, you can get the fibers like these and uh, later it has to be treated with different treatment uh, that will that will i'll cover later so next one please sir yeah here you have uh, varieties of natural fiber cellulosic fiber any cellulosic uh, i mean mineral fibers so in uh, case of uh, like uh, lignocellulosic cellulosic fibers you have wood fibers and non wood fibers in in case of wood fibers you have non wood fibers you have different varieties seed based leaf based bast based fruit based and stock fibers so uh, wh whether you are whether you are using leaf or bast or fruit based on that the fibers are its property will vary and uh, and uh, so again like uh, seed fibers like cotton cotton and a kebab and lupa will have a uniform property because it is a very small in size it is uh, again it has converted into uh, in uh, textile it is converted to yarn and you are getting different yarn with our requirement like uh, 10 count 20 count 30 count 40 count 50 count like that so you will get a synthetic uh, synthetic fiber structure in case of seed fiber but in case of leaf and bast fiber you can't get a such a finishing i mean uh, uh, the diamonds like 10 count 20 count like that so the leaf and bast fibers uh, it is very difficult to obtain the uniform structure in it and again uh, similarly the fruits and stack fiber next please sir. next yeah here yeah. fibers and country's origin so there are varieties of fiber we have seen uh, flax hemp sun rame jute hanap brazil sisal and abaca coir so out of which only few fibers are uh, uh, mostly available in india like coir sisal and uh, jute these things and uh, sun hemp are available in india but then the rest of the cases are available in malaysia philippines in, uh, even our sri lanka tanzania uh, sudan like the nigeria and african countries and china will get different so the origin of fibers uh, origin countries and the fibers are listed here you can have it uh, once or uh, the session is over thank you the next please next slide yes the, here again three rows are there the first row once after getting from the plants you will get the, the fibers like this and the second row is a treated fiber and third row it is a woven fiber after giving the textile process textile processing you will get the pattern like this so the first row is a raw fiber second row is a treated fiber with a different chemical treatment surface treatment you will get uh, some uniform property in it and third row in order to get uniform dimension uniform uh, weaving uh, structure so it is given in the textile industry in uh, weaving uh, power looms or uh, hand looms they are uh, it is converted into different woven pattern next slide please yeah here worldwide production of most used commercial natural fibers in terms of 10 uh, Uh, in terms of tonnes of uh, 10 power 3, so sugar cane pakasi is uh, 75,000 in 10 power of 3 tons, and bamboo is 30,000 in 10 power of 3 like that. Its capacity has been given per annum production. Uh, so the grass, sisal, and the coir hemp, all these fibers are listed. Its production capacity is, uh, is given in the in this slide. Next, next slide, please, sir. so factors related to the production of natural fibers that affect the fiber properties so uh, you will not have a but uh, i mean uniform property in the fiber because of the following reason one is plant growth uh, whether uh, so the factors affecting fiber properties are plant species so example uh, when you say sisal there are varieties of sisal plants are there so you have to choose a right variety of sisal and crop cultivation whether it is being cultivated in a uh, dry land or wetland 
and crop location whether it is uh, soil is fertile soil or uh, iron uh, mineral rich soil or mineral less soil or the dry rich Sir, excuse me, sir. There is no audio from your side, sir. Doctor Sambat, sir. There is no audio from your side, sir. Sambat sir, we could not hear you. Sir, we cannot hear you, sir. Uh, the participants, there is a technical issue. Oh, sir, can you hear sir, us? Sir, is it, uh, sir uh, I'm hearing your voice. Is it audible now? No, oh, no, it is audible, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, Sorry for the inconvenience, sir. It is because no, of no, network. Yes, yes, sir. We no problem, sir. Sir, I think you can continue, like, sir. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Oh. Just, just a minute, sir. So, uh, whether it is a uh, where it is being located in the uh, fiber that is like a tip of the leaf or middle of the leaf or bottom of the leaf so based on that its uh, property will vary and again harvesting whether it is a uh, uh, you have properly harvested in a particular time like uh, six months uh, or seven months or eight months or uh, cell wall thickness uh, uniform wall thickness and uh, fiber coarseness fiber structure addition and fiber extraction process like uh, decoding process, whether you are using manual decoding or mechanical uh, uh, decoding, based on that, its property will vary. And supply during transportation condition, uh, whether it is properly packed and transported, and the storage condition, whether it is uh, stored in sunlight or in a cool place or in a air conditioned place, based on that, its property will vary. Again, age of the fiber. So these are all. Uh, different factors that affect the fiber properties but in case of synthetic fiber these all these factors will not be there only manufacturing process whether it is a, a proper a temperature and a chemical composition and the pressure these uh, three factors will play a vital role in synthetic fibers but in case of natural fiber all these factors will affect the quality of the fiber next slide please Next slide, please, sir. Sir, is it audible? Yes, sir. You're yeah, audible. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, the uh, natural properties of the different fibers are given in the table. So, here you can see that the 
pineapple and flax will have the maximum property when compared with, uh, with other fibers like uh, flax will have a tensile strength like 500 to 900 that is based on the range of fiber so uh, property will vary uh, similarly or pineapple also it starts from 413 to 1627 and based on its diameter and the uh, cellulose content in it its, pro its strength will vary so it's all uh, again uh, sisal it's about 840 maximum and the kenoff it's a 1191 is a maximum and it's a very less strength like a uh, fire uh, abaca and bamboo cup of lava low strength when compared with the other uh, materials next slide please and all the fibers are having uh, nearly about 10 to 10 percent of moisture absorbing capacity sir. now here what are the chemical composition present in cellulose chemicellulose lignin pectin others waxes and water so uh, the better the uh, cell, cell whenever the cellulose content is more it will have a good mechanical strength like tensile load bearing uh, capacities so the fiber should have more cellulose content then only it will give you good strength and uh, reinforcement so if you take this one uh, the sisal is giving us uh, 67 to 78 flax 71 to 75 and hemp 72 to 74 percentage so and cotton having a, a good cellulose content and the others are these has to be removed by using chemical treatment process like wax, water content, and lignin. These things can be removed. The water can be removed using uh, when you uh, try it with sunlight, no, that to get exposed to the sunlight and it get evaporated. And wax and other things are removed by using a uh, sodium hydroxide solution. When you dip it on a so NO solution, that will remove the hemicellulose, lignin, pectin, and everything. Next slide, please. Uh, here, uh, energy for uh, production of fibers. So, as I uh, initially told uh, during the uh, introduction, the sisal will get only uh, 2488 mega per ton and the uh, flax 2752 mega per tonnage of production of uh, flax fiber. Similarly, hemp also. For as uh, when you compare the glass and carbon, glass will uh, have a 31,700 and carbon it is having 3,55,000. It is because of it has to under go uh, uh, with series of pro process like uh, carbon fiber and it consumes huge energy. Similarly, your steel material no for ten it will be uh, it will be more than your carbon fiber. But the natural uh, fibers are consuming very less energy to convert raw material into a uh, fiber material for per ten capacities. Next please. Uh, the pr price uh, per kg uh, so wood uh, wood fiber having only 42 dollar per meter cube and flax six dollar per meter cube like glass and polypropylene specific gravity of the different material as given and price per kg 0.26 uh, dollar per kg 0.4 dollar per kg and uh, so 1.87 uh, dollar per kg and 0.7 per dollar kg of Various metals are listed here in this table. So next slide, please. There are two forms of fiber. Uh, you can uh, there are fibers. Uh, either you can get continuous fiber or chopped or discontinuous fiber. These two are example of discontinuous fiber. The fibers are chopped into a small small pieces, and you will you will get an agglomerate like this. And uh, the second one is these chopped fibers are converted into a mat by using needle punching machine in the textile industries or um, where you will get a non human category of uh, type of things or else our uh, mat no the uh, floor mats are also made up of uh, using a needle punching technique as a mat material. So here you will have approximate equal distribution of uh, fiber over the uh, yeah, entire area. So, uh, when you do such a process, next slide, please.
here when it is uh, having long fiber earlier we have seen short fiber now it is a long fiber like hemp is twi uh, twisted into yarns mm -hmm. and this yarn is uh, rolled in the reel and these reels can be used to make a big coil uh, big ropes or whatever the sizes we wanted so these things are being used in uh, looms or hand loom either hand looms or power looms to convert uh, into a woven product so next slide please here again hem and flax rovings uh, rovings are called generally is called collection of strands strand is a single fiber our single hair is called strand when there are number of strands are collected together it is called rovings so it is uh, something like uh, 50 rovings or 100 rovings uh, uh, converted into uh, fiber rovings uh, and the latter rovings only are used to convert into textile fabric so you can't use strand or single fiber to convert into product it's very very difficult it will uh, break uh, you can't uh, use a single strand to uh, convert uh, into a product so you'll have to use collection of strands the collection of strands are called rovings these rovings will be used in the in the form of woven mat or woven materials next slide please here that effect of twisting on mechanical properties so when the car when you do uh, twisting its property uh, gets uh, the number of turns per meter only uh, 20 to 25 turns are there its property you can see that and if it is under 150 turns its uh, strength is maximum and if the number of turns are increased it's uh, because of more twisting force it will induce strength is getting reduced similar Wet means wet fiber or dry fiber. Based on that, strength is getting reduced. Next slide, please. Here again, uh, there are three types of fiber. Whether it is a single ply, cross ply, or it is a uh, woven into different category. If it is a single ply fiber, based on that angle, whether you are zero degree when you lay off with zero degree you will get uh young small as around 38 uh gigapascal and if the angle of twisting angle is being a loading angle is different like a 50 its strength is getting reduced similarly when it comes to 90 degree its strength has been come to one fourth of it so similarly when you do cross play uh getting into woven into different forms like one uh, rowing is in zero degree another rowing is in 45 degree the third rowing in a 90 degree and fourth rowing is 135 degree so that you will have a uh, fiber distribution in all the direction so you will you are getting equal inch more or less in all the loading angle so that uh, dash line that dash, a short dash line gives better mechanical property or better inch more or less then the others so when you do the orientation loading angle is zero you will have a better mechanical properties in single play but the cross play laminate zeros and nineties will have a very lesser next slide please it's a warp and whipped in a plain uh, woven like uh, our uh, uh, pai, uh i think uh, uh in tamil it's called koni pai uh it's a uh, used to collect uh, rice or uh, the agriculture products in the so, um, pro product so here the structure one is called warp warp is a continuous yarn and web is a cross yarn so warp is having uh, in this direction it is a plane view means one up one down one up one down is called a plane view and subtle and twill views are weaving pattern is different so you, here it's a balanced weaving called plain view. Next slide, please. Sir. It is a plain woven yarn and woven rowing schemes. Like, uh, so now you can see that the smaller portion is expanded. In the second diagram uh, for the, uh, I mean, better understanding. They have taken a 
better uh, looking magnified version of these things so collection of rowings and the yarns you know one up one down it's a plain woven uh, pattern sir next slide please it's a example of plain woven flax yarns uh, so once it is a uh, it is a final product flax like our uh, jute jute pack no it's very similar to, uh, flax will be very similar to jute but it's a different color you can find out it's uh, based on its color whether you can identify whether it's a jute flax or kanaf kem like that um, the experienced people will easily identify but uh, if it is the uh, first time we are saying no we cannot uh, and i mean identify which is jute which is flax or which is hemp or which is uh, can apply it so if the people are having field experience they will be easily identify that uh, prop uh, i mean uh, the material in better way sir next slide please sir. Yeah. so certain we uh, earlier we have seen equal distribution that is one up on one down here 16 warp yarns in a floating direction in a over each web yarn sir uh, after 16 web yarn there will be one and, uh, hello hello so uh, 16 warp yarns after the 16 web warp only the one up uh, down will comes so you can see that uh, uh, detail yes next slide please it is a three up one down and a two up two down it's a it is called a twill view or a, again to get different pattern like our jeans cloth no we have, we can get the diagonal lines in the jeans cloth uh, the lines so similarly these patterns can be uh, used in our uh, textile yarns next slide please it is uh, again a different view of example of plain woven flax yarn and uh, natural uh, twill yarn there are four types of uh, weavings available one is uh, plain satin twill and basket weave so basket weave are being very rarely used twill the uh, plain are most frequently used uh, twill and satins are uh, occasionally used whenever the requirements are there twill and certain uh, weaving patterns are being used the twill that's example our jeans cloth plain is example our honorary vesti dosti and all it's manufactured by a plain woven pattern and uh, again that uh, basket weave is an example of our mat next next slide please sir sorry to come next slide yeah a fiber surface treatments in order to get the contribution of fibers to the final properties of composite depends upon the following uh, properties one is mechanical properties of fiber second one is whether it is a continuous fiber or discontinuous fiber and also orientation whether it is oriented on 0 degree 45 degree 90 degree like that and volume fraction of fiber how much percentage of volume i mean of either volume or weight fraction of the fiber and fiber matrix interface whether it is properly adhered to the surface of the fiber matrix whether it is wetted properly wetted or not and crossing techniques used whether you are using hand lay up technique or compression molding technique or injection molding technique or transfer molding or plumb and winding based on that its uh, composite property will be varying next slide please Uh, there are various uh, types of surface treatments are given like alkali treatment nmoh asclization peroxide treatment uh, co graft copolymerization coupling agents like a uh, silane coupling agent is, is used in order to get a better me me uh, mechanical bonding property and permanganate treatment to remove certain materials from the surface of the uh, natural fibers next slide please so so far we have seen the uh, varieties of fibers now we are going to see the next slide sir. next yeah this is the concentration of uh, nao uh, solution so when you uh, give 6% nao to the fiber surface it is having uh, inter better interfacial 
shear strength and bamboo polyester composite material so if it is a very less it won't remove the, uh, uh, it won't treat the surface properly if we give more nao solution it will remove the uh, it will degrade the fiber so that its uh, property will reduce that is why 8% treatment has uh, reduced uh, its mechanical properties next slide please it's a uh, based on whether it is a biodegradable polymers whether it is a natural biodegradable or synthetic biodegradable you are you can use polysaccharides starch cellulose chitin as a natural material or proteins collagen uh, and casein albumin silk or polyesters polyhydroxy alginates and other properties like nickel silk natural rubber or cashew nut cell liquid can be used as a natural a polymer to protect the fiber but these things are having very very less strength when compared with the synthetic fibers so synthetic resins so synthetic resins like uh, polyamide poly anhydrides polyvinyl alcohol polyvinyl acetates polyesters polycarboxylate uh, polyethylene oxide and poly some polyurethane and polyacrylate but these all all are entirely biodegradable based on whether it is synthetic or natural like that. Dr. Sambat, sir, we could not hear you, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible again. Sir? Sambat, Dr. Sambat, sir, we could not hear you. Dr. Sampal, sir, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Sir, voice is breaking. Sambat sir, can you reconnect please? Yeah. Sambat sir, can you hear? Can you hear us, sir? Can you please disconnect and you know reconnect, please? Sir, is it audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
yes sir yes sir हम्म करता हूं सर कैन यू हेयर एस संपत सर एक सर पार्टिसिपेंट्स देर आर सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज हियर सो काइंडली बेयर विद अस विल वी विल विल रेक्टिफाई द इश्यूज सोन
sir kindly enable your audio sir sir kindly enable your audio sambath sir kindly enable your audio please Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, is it audible now, sir? Yes, sir. Please, please. Go okay, ahead. okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So there are uh, two types of uh, biodegradable polymers. One is uh, natural based, another is synthetic based. So natural based is uh, always has very less scent when compared with the synthetic one. So even these, all these uh, biodegradable polymers will have. Less scent when compared with the synthetic resins like uh, uh, non-biodegradable resins like uh, epoxy, polyester, and vinyl esters. Next slide, please. Next slide, sir. Yeah, as a matrix material, material for the natural fiber-based composites are thermosetting uh, resins, thermoplastic resins, and natural. Rubber natural polymers are phenolic resin, epoxy, polyester, polymed, polyurethane. So the phenolics are used for high temperature application, like it will withstand around 300 to 400 degrees centigrade. And epoxy, it will uh, it's a high strength application, so it can give better mechanical strength when compared with all these things. Polymed again, uh, high temperature application, it is used in space. And polypropylene, polyamide, imide, these are medium strength. This is very rarely used. This is a thermoplastic material. You can recycle it when it is melted. And the rubber based for natural fiber polymers is a highly flexible in nature and it will not give much strength, but it is a, it, it gives you a flexible property. And the composite can be tested at any time, any shape. But the thermo setting and thermoplastic material, they are very stiff when compared with the natural rubber based uh, polymers. Next, please. The next slide please sir yeah thank you sir so here i have given the uh, mechanical properties of uh, tensile strength of the pla with uh, different fibers and uh, again php poly hydroxide with the different fibers and polypropylene with the different fibers so out of which out of which the flax with the uh, i mean flax 30 percent with pl uh, plla gives a better tensile strength about 90 8 meha pascal plus or minus 1 uh, 12 and uh, similarly the ink smallest and and uh, uh, last column you can see at the last column it also gives uh, polypropylene with uh, 30 percent fiber class it's 82 plus or minus 4 so out of which the flax with pla is giving better mechanical properties when compared with the other fibers next please Now, so far, what we have seen is uh, um, uh, materials. Now, we are going to see the manufacturing methods of composite material by different techniques. Uh, based on the technique, its property will be very next slide, please, sir. So the first one is uh, a hand lab technique. As uh, in the uh, lathe is the father of all the machines, similarly, the hand lab technique is the father of all composite manufacturing process. So, initially, the hand lab was used to develop the composite material and the latter stage it, it, it was used in uh, 1940s 90, uh, in the before second world war the composite was uh, developed in uh, german and uh, the hand lab was used as the initial stage and later on they went with uh, spray up technique and uh, compression molding technique injection molding like that they have developed a lot of techniques so the first and foremost thing is hand lab technique where you can get only one surface as a finished one the other surface will not be a finished one there will be a, a waviness in the ups, ups and downs so here you can see that in the hand lab technique first you need to sp uh, spray the mold release agent so that it uh, the resin will not stick with the mold if you don't apply the mold release agent 
the resin will stick on with the mold then you have to break the product and uh, the product will not be useful so first you have to spray the uh, what do you call it uh, mold release agent like polyvinyl alcohol or wax content liquid wax on the surface wax will not allow any material to stick on it similarly your pva pva will uh, when you apply water that will dissolve so after applying this one uh, in, uh, immediately you have to apply resin followed by fiber resin fiber like that you have to stack up to the required thickness and uh, then you will have to leave it for some time uh, if it is a hand lab you need to leave it for one day to get completely cured all the polymers get uh, i am all the liquid gets solidified or gel into a uh, solid one you need to allow for 24 hours then you can remove it off from the mold that is the last fifth stage it is shown sir. next slide please sir here it is a spray up technique in order to speed up the uh, manufacturing process the second uh, by, uh, a technique adopted in the uh, i mean manufacturing composite was spray up technique it is used in a um, uh, high production rate where the raw materials like uh, resin and fibers are sprayed over the surface of the mold and it is allowed to cure you'll get uh, more production but again you can't use continuous fiber for this but in hand lab you can use continuous fiber you can get the strength in all the i mean uh, wherever the strength is required you can lay the fibers in that direction you can get it but in case of spray process you will get send a uniform send in all the direction like helmet is no helmet or manufactured by spray techniques sir. next that's a back molding process the first two process will have a wide during manufacturing process when you adapt the third process you will get a wide free composite material you will not have uh, the entrapped air so during manufacturing process the air will entrap between the layers so you, it is very difficult to remove in hand lab as well as spray up technique but when you use back molding technique you can use vacuum or high pressure where either vacuum you can use or high pressure in order to remove the entrapped air between the layers so that you'll get wide free composite in the vacuum molding process and it is a very pucker process as uh, aerospace application all aerospace uh, applicate uh, i mean all the products used in aerospace are made up of vacuum assisted compression molding vacuum assisted uh, uh, yeah, either uh, what do you call it uh, vacuum uh, transfer uh, resin molding only used to make the product used in aerospace applications next please sir. yeah here it's a technique has been given and uh, the yellow color is the top layer sheet, which is the non adhesive material. And the block uh, inside, there is a block uh, plate, no? That is a composite material. And uh, the top surface, it has been uh, connected with the nipple. And through that nipple, uh, the vacuum pump is connected. So the once the vacuum pump is switched on, it will suck the entrapped air in the uh, inside the things, and you will get. get uh, vacuum free composite material in this case. Sir. Next, please. Sir. Here, autoclave system. The autoclave system is advanced uh, technique. It is uh, developed uh, more than 30 40 years back when compared with the uh, other uh, media, uh, this thing. Here, you can get whatever the pressure uh, uh, you wanted, you can get it, and similarly. Uh, similarly, the temperature you can get positive temperature, negative temperature in it. Similarly, positive pressure and negative pressure. If you want to uh, have a negative uh, pressure, means you have to apply vacuum. If you want to have a positive pressure, the compressed air has to be allowed inside. So, this that is the advantage of water cloud system. All the aircraft uh, wings know all aircraft parts are being used in this uh, water cloud technique. To get different, uh, I mean, size. It can accommodate different size of the combo, uh, components inside. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Uh, these are all the raw material uh, manufacturing process for uh, uh, seed molding compound. Uh, resin, filler, fiber, all these things are mixed together to form a uh, bulk molding compound. Either it is called a BMC or DMC, dough molding compound or bulk molding compound. So the resin, matrix material and fiber chopped either glass paper or you can use even natural fiber. Natural fiber and uh, the fillers in order to have a, in order to reduce cost or improve certain property, the fillers are being used. So all these things are mixed in a, a Zigma plate mixer or Z plate mixer so that you'll get a, something like non-adhesive material like paste material and that material is used as a raw material for the following process. Next please. Sir. Ah, yeah, the compression molding. So here the raw materials are earlier case the dough or BMC material that uh, the predetermined quantity of raw material is kept inside the mold and the top mold get compressed so you so that you will get the whatever the shapes available in the mold you will get the product so that is the uh, advantage of this thing here you will get both side as surface finish and equal i mean uh, dimensions will be very pakka dimension stability all the component will have a same same uniform dimensions and uh, all the material will have a uniform density but whenever you place a predetermined quantity, say example, 25 gram means always if you put 25 grams at the middle, you will get a correct paka product. And if you charge the extra material like 30 grams or 35 grams, it will get over densed. The stress will induce in the surface, I mean in the product. So you will not have proper, uh, I mean, result, uh, tense in a, I mean, strength in it. So all material should have uniform charge. Charge means weight of the material. Then only you will get a proper uh, finished one and a stress-free composite material. Thank you. Sir. Next, please. Here it is a compression and transfer molding machine, which is uh, it is a Devi polymer. It is available at Chennai in the industrial estate. So it is a big size machine. They are, it is used for electrical housings, uh, uh, transformer housing or panel port housings. Or because that has to be insulating material. No, you can't use the uh, conductive material for uh, housings. So the thermoplast, uh, thermo setting materials with uh, glass paper are being used as a. Uh, housing the electrical housing uh, purpose even the mortar casings are uh, non uh, non conductive materials are being used so for this they have used compression and transfer molding machine to make such a big housing electrical housing next week, next slide please sir. here some of the products made out of smc this is a small electrical housing where you can use uh, uh, insulate, uh, i mean switches and other electrical equipment inside the housings. This is a smaller one, but larger size is also available. One meter by one meter size can be made using that uh, larger machine. Next slide, please. Uh, this is SMC seed melting, uh, SMC manufacturing machine where uh, the raw materials are converted earlier we have seen as uh, dmc bmc or dmc dow or bulk molding compound the smc is mainly used for whenever you need a uniform product wall thickness people will go for smc so for smc again the conventional materials like glass paper and uh, the fillers and uh, liquid resins are mixed together and it is being made as raw material is being made as a sheet and these sheets are used as a raw material for making components. That is why it is called a SMC seat molding compound. Next slide, please, sir. There's something like calendaring process. It is very similar to calendaring. So this is X, uh, SMC manufacturing process. The green one is the product which comes out of the uh, SMC. Next, please.
next one sir so resin transfer molding process where uh, you need not uh, worry about the much uh, compression uh, loading required for this so uh, large automobile components are made using the resin transfer mold so in this case initially the raw materials or the fibers are kept inside the mold and before that the mold release agent will be applied on the surface and after closing this one the resins like a resin and catalyst will be supplied to the pump and once this pump is connected to the mold the mold uh, i mean vacuum will be applied so once vacuum is applied it will suck the mid or it will remove the entrapped air inside the mold so automatically the resin will come from the other side and fill the cavity or spaces available between the fibers and uh, it will give void free composite material and once if uh, when you have to stop this resin means once the resin comes out of the air outlet pipe you can stop it and you can close the valve and leave it some time for uh, with the heat and pressure you can get the product immediately this is the advantage of resin transfer mold uh, like it is very similar to the vacuum back mold but vacuum back mold you can't uh, use that uh, back in uh, directly on the compression molding process but you can use this in compression molding process to get consolidated products next please as a vacuum assisted resin infusion molding uh, resin transfer molding is entirely different from infusion molding where you will get uh, the the resin is fed from the one end and uh, the other one is uh, vacuum is uh, you are uh, applying the other end but the re resin will fill all the parts of the uh, molded area it is not a close it is a open one like our boat no our uh, small small boats in the coastal area are manufactured using this vacuum assist resin infusion technique uh, to get smaller fisherman boats are uh, these days the fiber boats are replacing the catamarans in the coastal areas those things are ma manufactured by resin infusion vacuum assisted resin infusion molding technique next please sir it is a flamen winding technique so here uh, whenever you want to have a hollow cylindrical part like a fuel tank in the spacecraft or a fuel tank in the automobile in a, or a fuel tank for a, even our uh, this thing no pipes uh, uh, water uh, uh, water pipes in gujarat uh, the major Sir, sir, we could not hear you again. Can you please uh, disconnect and connect again, sir? Sambat sir, totally we could not hear you. Sambat sir. Sir.
Sambat sir, can you speak please? Sir, can you try to speak? Sir, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Jason. Uh, so uh, this is plumb and winding techniques is very uh, similar to our thread cutting operation or lay where carriage is being used to uh, cut the equal uh, uh, I mean equal pitch. So similarly, instead of uh, carrier uh, the cutting tool, the plumb uh, wires are uh, woven rovings. Rovings are being used to wind over the surface of the mandrel, sir. The mandrel which gives the inner diameter so if you need to have a half meter diameter in a inner diameter the uh, wooden mandrel or steel mandrel has to be of half meter diameter over which the resin impregnated roving will wind over it and once it reaches the other end again it comes to this end like that it goes and uh, winds over the surface and uh, by that way the all the parts are filled with uh, the roving and you will get a very pakka finished one and you will get a larger size of pipe. Uh, again, the length of the pipe depends upon the length of the, uh, the length between uh, headstock and tailstock. No? So similarly here also, the, those space will be available. Sir. Next, please. Sir. Here you can see that the larger pipes are being manufactured in this plumbing winding machine process. It is a, a, a like conventional lathe machine. Similar to very conventional ethnic. Next one, sir. Sir, next. Uh, here, here you can see that the FRP pipes are being manufactured. The manufactured pipe, they are removed it from the uh, plumb and winding machine. And uh, in order to remove it from the uh, mandrel, they have uh, taken to the other part and uh, they will be removed and they will get half meter diameter or half meter or whatever the diameter available in the mandrel they will get it so. and gulf countries no gulf countries uh, the crude oil is being transported from the oil well to the shipping area or the storage area they are currently they are using uh, frp material uh, frp pipes in order to avoid corrosion uh, Frequent corrosion. Next, please. Plumb and winding. There are three types of patterns. One is helical, circumferential, and polar. Polar is a completely closed. Uh, it's uh, mainly used for fuel tank. And helical and circumferential mainly used for making pipes, hollow product. Next, please. Sir. It's a pollution process. It is a uh, again uh, for all these things. You need not worry about whether uh, glass fiber are being used. You can replace the conventional natural fiber, lengthy fiber like flax, sisal, uh, rovings, and uh, you can replace this. But the problem is this will easily uh, this will have very less strength when compared with the glass. That is a problem. Sir. And pollution process. It is a uh, it is very similar to extrusion process like. Uh, here you can get only constant cross section in the product like either you can get hollow surface or solid surface or I section or T section or H section whatever the uh, die shape is available those things can be obtained using this uh, case in the uh, category it is a uh, they are pulling it over the die and curing it in the hot day 
and again immediately it comes to the cutting section uh, very similar to our layer pipes next process next slide sir yeah it is a full farming process after uh, it is a another extension of, of uh, pulverization process after pulling out from the dye it is uh, kept in a, a farming dye for some time and you are get a full formed part like half a uh, semi circle or a, a semi circle product or curved product or whatever the forms available on the dye you will get the uh, shape in the products next slide please the electric poles uh, which was used in our uh, uh, forest area are manufactured Uh, of FRP material only, not the steel or concrete structure. Concrete structure, it is very difficult to carry at the top of the hill station. So, uh, recent days, the FRP materials are being used as a electrical poles in the hill station material that is being manufactured using full torsion tech. Now, this is a vacuum resin infusion molding process. There is a, a board. Earlier, I told you, you know, it's a board. So, a uh, Board is a manufacturer using is vacuum resin infusion molding process. Next, please. Application of now. So far, we have seen uh, different types of natural fiber, different types of uh, what do you call it uh, manufacturing process. Now we are uh, coming to the uh, uh, last part of our discussion is application. Application in the sense. Where the products are uh, being used, our uh, composite materials are being used. It is mainly used as a building products as 74 percent, and industrial consumer as six uh, percent, and transportation 16 percent, and infrastructure as a four percent. So majorly, the FRB material, natural fiber FRB materials, are being used in building products. And secondly, it is a transportation. Thirdly, it's for industrial consumer, and lastly, it is for infrastructure products. Projects. Next, please. And uh, wood fiber composite. Uh, earlier, it is a natural fiber, and uh, it is a wood fiber composite. Sixty-six percent are being used for building, and ten uh, percent transportation, eighteen percent infrastructure. The other uh, remaining is industrial and consumer products. Next, please. Here it is up to 2010. Earlier and then 99, the consumption was very less. And uh, see that uh, around 2010, it consumed nearly one lakh metric tons of uh, FR material. I mean natural fiber in Europe alone. Next please. Here uh, again, uh, the consumption of FR material. I mean natural fiber material in German. And the 1996 it was about nearly 4,000, and then 99 it was about nearly 15,000. But look at the other the rest of the European countries consume only maximum of 7,000 metric tons. But uh, think about Germany. Germany is having a very good industry when compared with the other countries in the Europe. So next please. This uh, mesmerized print score. They have used a lot of uh, natural fiber-based composite material as components. It is not mainly used for structural application. It is for low load areas, or sheet uh, seating area, door area, panel, floorings, and the dashboard. All uh, all these uh, parts are manufactured by natural fiber-based material. It's a high-end car, so that its uh, density is very very less when compared with the Conventional materials like uh, steel or uh, FRB material. FRB material, its density will be about two, and your glass fiber, uh, I mean natural fiber density will be about one less than one point five. So uh, it is mainly used. And moreover, if any accident occurs, the synthetic materials like uh, plastic will easily catch fire, and natural uh, fiber it takes. Some time to catch fire. Uh, it is having more fire resistance than the plastic material as well as FR materials. Next, please.
here uh, that uh, BMW car, they have used non-woven fibers, ne necked door panels and finished door panel. And uh, some of the other parts of the car are being, uh, they have used natural fiber. So next please. It's a component automotive parts made in a natural fiber composite, Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, uh, Timer Chrysler, and Opel, Ford, Renault, Mercedes Benz, and the different parts are given uh, for the different uh, segment of automobile industry. Next, please. Again, uh, Timer uh, Chrysler with the different series, uh, S series, C series, and uh, E series, uh, all the class, I mean, these are the different parts of the parts used in it. And similarly, the bumper of bus uh, transportation and flooring of buses and uh, floorings of uh, human cars are, uh, they have used natural fiber material as uh, their parts. Next please. Next slide. Uh, the sector within auto industries, there are four sectors. One is OEM, original equipment manufacturer. That is, they are a car manufacturer. Second one is a tire one supplier. They supply the specialized in India part of the automobile. Second, uh, third one is a substrate supplier. They supply non known producer in the textile industries and plastic parts. In case of natural fiber based granule technology, and the last one is a natural fiber supplier. They are either the farmers or the organization which supplies the hemp, sisal, uh, flax, rame to the substrate supplier. Uh, these are the four segments, uh, sectors in automobile industries. Next, please. Here you can see that natural supplier will supply, natural fiber supplier will supply the fiber alone to the substrate supplier and they will make non oven mat like this and these mats are being converted into partial product in a tire bone supplier and uh, in tire bone supplier they will make it as a product and uh, it goes to the finally the OEM original equipment manufacturer, they will get the finished product like this and finally assemble it into a so, Next piece. These are all the different parts of the automobile and of different fibers and opportunities and uh, key points uh, like whether it is a lightweight, lower cost, eco friendly, governmental support, friendly processing, thermal recycling is possible, good thermal acoustic insulating is possible. And the different parts like uh, seat bags, uh, spare tire wheel, and which is being made with flax and the opportunities medium. Like that, it's, uh, this slide will give you an insight about uh, the. Uh, Various parts of the automobile as well as different natural fibers. Next, please. This is uh, other than automobile uh, sector. Uh, this is a uh, tank or tank cover are being manufactured using a for natural fiber based product. And some of the interior parts of uh, these things and small, small parts can be made using. This chopped fibers. The, the, the fourth uh, bottom uh, diagram shows the chopped fibers are being used to make these products with uh, resin, different resin. Next, please. And uh, the first diagram shows the coconut shell powders are uh, used to make this product, and uh, the same powder is used to make two wheeler. Uh, tank panel like this and uh, this is chopped uh, fi fibers are used to make uh, car interior parts and other uh, this thing is uh, something petrol uh, pump uh, station is being used next please or air filling station next please uh, natural fiber based other products like uh, top and uh, this is uh, a uh, storage tanks of gas uh, gas storage or petrol storage tanks 
using plumbing vining techniques uh, these tanks are used in automobile and a roof top is again made up of natural fiber and the door panels are made up of natural fibers next please Uh, this hybrid composite the synthetic carbon fiber is uh, mixed uh, blended with the flax fiber inside so that you'll get uh, the uh, you uh, you'll get uh, cost gets reduced and uh, the property will not be much affected using this hybridization technique and the finishing of product will be very very good so that uh, people have gone for hybrid, uh, hybrid composites so this is an example of hybrid composite material Used in different parts. Next, please. This is natural paper based. Not only in automobile, even you, you can use in uh, household applications. And the fibers are used for textile industries as a wheel. And this is a car door panel. Next, please, sir. The next slide, please. Next slide, sir. Am I audible now, sir? Hello. Mujhe kumar sir, next slide, please. Yeah. This is again a door panel, which is uh, used 50% canaf and 50% polypropylene. Its density about uh, 1.6. Age uh, gram per centimeter uh, cube, not a centimeter square. Uh, it's uh, aerial density. If it is a meter square, aerial density. If it is a kg uh, gram, uh, gram per centimeter cube, it is a density of the Next, please. Uh, benefits uh, a reduction are you can uh, get 50 percent, 25 to 50 percent cheaper in uh, reduction in cost, and similarly. 50% uh, reduction in uh, when you use uh, the uh, FRP material, I mean natural fiber material instead of the ABS material and the lightweight when compared with the uh, other materials. And it is a safer when it get accidented, particularly uh, high stability and also um, sub splintering is absorbed during the uh, fast behavior. Next, please. Uh, additional benefits good acoustic uh, property and thermal it is uh, having wet to thermal insulation and uh, it is uh, easier to get and uh, equal and strength values when compared with the glass fiber and it exhibit good formability and uh, it is a uh, natural fibers are superior to glass fiber from the health point of view and it is uh, abundantly available worldwide throughout the world you can get it next next please Now it is coming to the application and construction and the furnishing industries. So buildings are building materials are being used as a FRP a natural fiber based material. Next, please, sir. See here are some of the parts: uh, one chair and uh, interiors are uh, floor mats, uh, flooring. Even the tiles can be used. Uh, made with the natural fiber uh, even sometimes synthetic fiber the recreation part with the different colors no uh, rooftop can be made with frp material uh, you will get a different aesthetic appearance when you use that uh, uh, either the cotton cloth or something else as a material to make the frp uh, i mean natural fiber this composition next please Uh, granules, uh, how the products are being made? This is an injection molding machine where initially the raw materials are uh, uh, fibers are chopped into small, small pieces and it is mixed with uh, polymer, whether it is a polypropylene or polyethylene or uh, 
TMMA, whatever the material you want to add, you can add it up and you can get in the form of granules. The granules will be used as a raw material in the case of injection molding and you will get the final finished product from the injection molding based on the uh, mold shape available in this. Next please. These are also some of the products made use of injection molding product. Earlier we have seen the raw material the previous slide. Now you are seeing the finished product made out of wood based uh, plastic. Next please. Uh, she, uh, I mean, these are all extruded product, which is uh, extrusion means it will give only constant profile. It is a uh, interior part for interior purpose. You will be using channels or roopings, etc., etc. Pa channel, H channel, I channel, uh, whatever the channels you want to make, that can be made using this even pipes or uh, this uh, hollow section will have. Uh, it is used for door panels, uh, bathroom doors. All these things can be manufactured using wood filled composite material for interior purpose because this is not exposed to the atmosphere where whenever the plastic metal is kept in the atmosphere it is get easily degraded over a period of time. But if you use it in the interior part uh, not exposed to the sunlight means it will, its life will be more like our car parts no interior car parts are being plastic material it's it will be there for nearly 15 to 20 years so it depends upon where I, exactly we are using it so if it is interior part its life will be more when compared with the conventional so cost will be less uh, weight will be very very less when compared with aluminium steel and uh, so that uh, you can have a more floor in the city area, like a, a 10 floor, 20 floor, or 15, uh, 15 floors. So the interior parts are made up of these materials. Only less load will be applied. Sir. Next, please. This is again some uh, flat uh, based uh, products. Sir. Next, please. This is uh, some of the comparison chart whether uh, cumulative energy demand and greenhouse gases. Uh, so, cumulative energy demand in order to make how much energy is uh, this? Already, I gave uh, some brief uh, introduction about uh, consumption of energy and similarly, uh, greenhouse effect. So, whenever you use uh, lightweight material, the consumption of uh, uh, I mean, the release of carbon dioxide per kg of material very, will be very, very less. But the other conventional material that will release more uh, carbon dioxide per kg of uh, same material. Sir. That is a uh, data behind this slide, sir. Next, please. Next, also we'll uh, discuss the same category. Whenever you use propeller shaft in the steel material, how much energy is being used and greenhouse. But when it is replaced with carbon paper and glass paper, the entire life period it will uh, release one uh, less than 227 kg of carbon dioxide, less carbon dioxide. Similarly, for other materials, it has given car closer panel, steel, aluminium produce. Uh, the same thing is uh, replaced with carbon fiber or epoxy. 2096 kg of carbon dioxide will be reduced per part. That is a uh, data behind this slide. Sir. Next, please. So, again, this is very similar to that. Next, please. And now we are uh, coming to the conclusion part. Nowadays, uh, the uh, we are giving a lot of attention to the natural fiber. It's an uh, eco friendly material. This uh, resulted in growing in this, the natural lignocellulose materials <coughs> composite based on them. And lignocellulose composites are much more safety during fire than the man made polymers because of lack of dangerous melting and less toxic gases. And
Sambat sir, we could not hear you sir. Sambat sir. Can you please disconnect and reconnect again, sir? So, sir, Sampat, sir. Sir, are you there? Uh, uh, Jason, sir, am yes, I audible? Sir, yes, sir, please go ahead. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, next slide, please. Uh, two more slides, that's it. Uh. And uh, you can, uh, interesting results uh, while obtaining uh, from this, sir. Uh, Polypropylene and polyethylenes are uh, added with the uh, plaques, hemp and uh, sisal. This will reduce the flammability by uh, 20%. So they have a better uh, safety pro process when compared with the other remedies. So with that conclusion, I'll stop my presentation. Last slide. Thank you, Mr. for your patience. And uh, it took a lot of time to close, uh, close the session because of my network poor network connection so audience if you have any queries or uh, you can ask me now uh, thank you sir thank you sir you uh, took us in depth into green composites and uh, sorry to the participant because of the technical issues what we had and the connectivity issues now here are a few questions you know put forth uh, 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 by the attendees to the presenter okay. I'll, I'll ask one by one, one after other. No, the presenter will ask, answer the question. Now, the first okay. question uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Kotipalli, the Guru Lingam, it goes like this. Uh, how silk and animal wool are placed in application of green composites? Any research work being carried out on this aspect in terms of cost effectiveness? Sir, uh, animal wools uh, are uh, it's a natural uh, based material. When it whenever it is uh, uh, animal wool and silk is a highly cost uh, costly material, sir. Animal animal wool, no, in the Jammu Kashmir, uh, even in our area, uh, it is from uh, that uh, animal uh, is uh, that uh, hair is being cut into uh, shaved into fibers, and that is uh, used as a raw material for making products. Sir. Uh, that is the one and cost effective the silk is not cost effective silk is highly cost and uh, it's very very difficult but whenever uh, it is a type of fiber available that's it and uh, you can't say that it is a cost effective sir. Uh, silk and uh, animal wools are slightly costlier than the other conventional fiber materials sir. thank you sir thank you sir Another question from a participant, again, Mr. Guru Lingam has asked this. How hygiene the green composite are in application of food industry? Are they covered under any statutory regulating authority? Food industry, sir. Uh, food industry, uh, because uh, the conventional, uh, if it is a biodegradable material, uh, like a polylactic acid. Polylactic acid is naturally derived, it is uh, acid derived from your uh, milk. So it will not affect any part of our system whenever uh, you, you use PLA or polyvinyl alcohol. Both are water soluble in nature. Uh, when, uh, when the polylactic acid uh, covers are being disposed on the surface, uh, I mean environment, within 10 days, the entire cover gets disposed of. But if it is a uh, if sunlight affects it, but if it is kept inside uh, the room or house, it will be there for nearly 100 days or 150 days. Sir. But it won't, it is a uh, biomaterial, so uh, nothing will happen to human beings, sir. So you can use it as a 
packing material, food packing material for this reason. For this Thank reason, you. you can use it for. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question. When natural okay. fibers go with biodegradable polymers in green composites, will it yes. give rise to any chemical or biological reaction that may cause the hazardous threatening virus to emerge out of it? Throw some light on this issue, sir, if information is available. Uh, sir, normally, uh, uh, the fibers are being surface treated. It will not have any uh, uh, bad, I mean, virus and other things there. Similarly, the resin material also. If it is a natural, uh, I have uh, come across with the cashew nut uh, resin. Uh, one professor from Anamala University, he, uh, he gave me the resin to make a natural fiber-based composite material. And we made that material, we kept the product uh, for a long time. Nothing happened to it, sir. Uh, but uh, natural fiber, once it is reacted, no, uh, chemicals, uh, anything get reacted, nothing will uh, happen, sir. Uh, before reaction only, even that uh, poly polyester, poly epoxy, before uh, reacting only, it will have a chemical property. Once after reacting, no chemical is being liberated from it, sir. Like our switchboard, no, it is uh, made up of urea formaldehyde or malamin formaldehyde. We are uh, frequently touching it off. Nothing happened to our hand, even our uh, uh, cooker handle. It is uh, made of urea formaldehyde. We are using in our uh, cooking uh, industry. So nothing happened to it. Once chemically reacted, nothing will happen to it. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question, sir, from Mr. Kumar Suranjeevi. Are these oh. natural composite material have longer use and resistant so any degradation by microbes is a uh, concern about microbes yeah uh, so i don't have much knowledge about microbes sir being oh. a mechanical engineer i didn't concentrate yeah. much on it this yes. is frankly speaking and so that is uh, thank you thank you sir we'll go to the next question sir where can we find the vendors for these products used in house like you know the material composite what we use for in house application he's asking about the vendor and their place from where we can get Sir, the vendor uh, Go Green is available at Chennai, sir. Uh, they are supplying all the raw materials sir. Uh, uh, vada, near Wadabal, you know. Uh, uh, Go Green composites, uh, they, they are supplying uh, raw material. Even uh, the woven fabrics, flax, uh, hemp, sisal available in the, with them. And another supplier at uh, near Chennai is uh, uh, somewhere near Pallavaram. Or, uh, uh, Anangaputu, sir. Anangaputu. They are, they are, yeah, Anangaputu. They are, okay. Again, Anangaputu also, they are supplying materials. So I don't know the name of the industry, but uh, he is okay. supplying from house. But in Walastavakam, if uh, they can go with the net, sir. Go green composites. Go green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you know, Mr. Santosh Kumar has got answer for his question. Yeah. Next question is from uh, Dasharim Sa. Okay. Which is the best combination of material for biocomposite in terms of performance? Durability and safety. I think it's a generic question. Yeah. Sir, again, uh, it uh, depends upon the type of resin you are choosing it, sir. So if you choose thermo setting resin like epoxy and a polymer, uh, sorry, natural fiber like uh, 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 pineapple fiber or flax, that will have a better mechanical property than others, sir. So the combination only it will give a better uh, life and better uh, properties. Sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, then, what are the guidelines for the disposal of composite materials used in okay. automotives? This is again raised by Mr. Santosh Kumar. Sir, uh, that uh, you can uh, you can chop into small small powder. You can dispose it uh, during uh, the load range process. No, new lower roads are being laid. Uh, that time. You can fill it with uh, as a filler. Like earlier, the uh, plastics are used, uh, uh, I mean, filled with uh, material, raw material, I mean, with uh, what do you call that, blue metals, uh, with uh, sand, no. I mean, uh, the roads will not be again taken and used it up, sir. Yeah. So, uh, the one time uh, you can purge with that one. Otherwise, if, if this is for only thermoset uh, resin as well as uh, synthetic fibers. Natural fiber, you can dispose at any place. After uh, removing that uh, uh, matrix material, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question from Mr. S uh, yeah, Santosh Priya. Sir, which is the best method for manufacturing composites? 
uh again it depends upon the cost availability sir uh, so rtm resin transfer mold is one of the best methods to make larger part uh, highly finished surface sir but injection mold and compressed mold will cost slightly higher sir that is a uh, uh, if you uh, again it depends upon whether you want they want to make larger product or smaller products more numbers based on that they have to select the uh, right processor larger product means rtm with the smaller product with more number means uh, compression molding process thank you sir thank you sir uh, then uh, another question i think uh, it's a repetition again can you mention some commercial venture supplying green composite made household made i i i'll answer his question okay. sir yeah that's okay. what you can get this composite from go green which is available in vadapalli chennai if you google you can get the address there is another supplier from Managaputur Pallavaram, probably we'll, uh, before the end of uh, this FTP, if possible, we'll try to uh, collect that information and uh, share with you, Mr. Santosh Kumar. Uh, thank you. Uh, any more questions? If somebody has raised their hand, let me just have a look at it. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, sir, you have answered uh, all their queries, sir. Thank you okay. so much, Dr. Sambat, sir. You took us through a very elaborate and detailed and informative presentation regarding composites, particularly green composites. Uh, there are many, uh, many takeaways uh, were there from your presentation. And uh, a simple thing, it's 25 to 50 percent cheaper compared to synthetic composites. So disposing synthetic is the biggest issue. And uh, once we get into slowly get into natural composites, uh, naturally, we are eliminating that problem, you know, by getting, um, becoming more, using more uh, natural composite. The issue with composite will be uh, eradicated, in fact, uh, slowly, you know. And uh, it's good that, you know, a lot of uh, our premium car manufacturer like Benz and, uh, you know, uh, uh, these uh, big players, you know, they were using, you know, natural composites for mostly interior application. So, uh, weight reduction, as we all know. The density of composite is approximately 1 to 1.2, aluminium 2.78, your steel 7.8. So more uh, uh, compared to synthetic uh, fibers, natural fiber density will be still lesser. Your weight could be less. So a uh, lot of information uh, uh, Dr. Sambat uh, sir gave us and uh, very elaborately he explained about uh, the comp molding processes and uh, the advantages disadvantages application of composite so with this uh, uh, we would like to thank you uh, dr sambat sir for uh, spending your valuable time we can understand the network issues or uh, even our participant can understand it uh, thank you sir uh, thank you the participant once again for your patient uh, understanding thank you all